okay guys so we will be talking about the problem special matrix in this video so i don't know why the number of submissions for this problem is quite low actually this is a really an easy problem if you are uh, aware about the concepts that uh, we have used in finding the prime numbers like uh, like the concept of siva pirates sin algorithm like that then we can easily uh, solve this problem efficiently okay so before discussing this problem uh, i think you guys must have to aware how to find out the number of prime divisors of a certain numbers like all the numbers in the range let's say 1 to n in n log of log of n time complexity if you are not aware about that no need to worry about i am going to explain this in this video also so like uh, let's read out the problem first we have been given n into a matrix where 1 to n are the rows and 1 to m are the columns so element at uh, i comma j is going to be equal to f of i j where uh, uh, like suppose i is 1 and j is 1 so the very first row and the very first column that is the cell at 1 comma 1 that is the value at the cell 1 comma 1 is f of 1 plus 1 which is f of 2 so if it is uh, if it is f of x then the value at that cell would be the number of prime divisors of x now this is going to be important how we need to find out the prime divisors of x you can do it in like if the number is n then you can do it in n square root of n time complexity but you can see that n and m both are going to range up to 10 raised to the power 6 so if you do like uh, suppose in the worst case n plus m into square root of n plus m like the complexity is going to be like uh, much more and the number of iteration is going to exceed 10 raised to the power 9 also there are 10 test cases so we need to find an efficient way to find out the number of prime divisors of any number uh, any number lying in the range like in the worst case we have n rows and n columns so n plus m like the last row and the last column that is the cell n comma m will have the value n plus m so we would be having uh, we need to know efficiently the all the prime divisors of numbers that are in the range 2 to n plus m if you are not going to understand this then no need to worry about i am going to explain this efficiently with the help of example so let's move further to understand this so first thing that you need to understand this how to find out the prime divisors of a number prime divisor let's say the number is n so what you are going to do is you are going to iterate up to square root of n and let's find out the prime divisor so this is the very simplest way but what will happen if you need to find out the prime divisors for all the numbers in the range 1 to n if you have been asked this then what you are going to do so let's try to understand this in a simpler manner suppose we have the numbers 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 uh, let's say up to 12 let's say okay so what we are going to do is we are going to fill up all the values at these specific positions as zero it means that currently there are no prime divisors at these positions like we have not incremented it and let's say we are going to initialize with zero right now now whenever i will find zero it means that it will denote the prime number so if 2 is a prime number then we will mark all its multiples not that i am ta not talking about the proper multiples i am talking about the multiples i will increment all the multiples of this prime number by 1 okay like in the concept of sieve pirato stein's algorithm what we are going to do to like uh, to eliminate the uh, like uh, composite number or you can say to mark out the composite numbers we will just pick out the prime number mark all its proper multiples as uh, false i think yes denoting that it is not a prime similar to this case what we are going to do is we are going to pick up a certain number this is 2 and mark all its multiples or uh, like, uh, let's say increment all its multiples by 1 okay so this 0 becomes 1 this 4 becomes 1 and this 6 becomes 1 this 8 also becomes 1 this 10 also becomes 1 and this 12 also becomes 1 now the thing that should be noticed over here is like if you understand this element 2 you can see that the prime factor 
of this two is only two and the count is only one yes it is giving the correct answer now four if you factorize four as uh, like this part like if you do prime factorization it's two square so two is the only prime divisor so the count is one yes it is giving correct answer and in case of six you can see six can be written as two into three so two and three are those prime factors so you can see for two i have already incremented this one. Okay, so what about the next cases? Like, uh, let me just uh, write down clearly. I think yes. So for two, it is one zero one zero one zero one zero one zero and one finally. Now you can see again. I'm finding uh, zero over the position three. Okay, so what we are going to do is pick out this number, mark all its multiples as like increment all the multiples by one. So this zero. becomes 1 and for in the case of the next multiple 6 becomes 1 in like 1 plus 1 2 9 becomes 1 and 12 becomes 2 yes it is giving correct answer you can see if you factorize 6 it can be written as like prime factorization so it should be 2 into 3 and you can see the count is coming as 2 for this one for this one similarly if you put out the 12 it's 2 square into 3 like for 2 i have already incremented for 3 i have already incremented Now the next element is five. So I will mark ten, and similarly fifteen, and so on. Okay, so this is the way you are going to do. What is the complexity of this one? It is like log of log of n. And how this uh, like complexity came? I'm not going into detail. It is like some harmonic series of prime numbers there where this log arithmetic factor comes. If you are interested in that, you are going to find a lot of resources on the internet. You can study that. Okay, so this algorithm takes like uh, similar to that of heap and log of log of n. I think yeah. So what is the worst case where n goes? You can see that I need the elements up to i th row and j th column, and both can vary up to n and m. So n plus m value I need. So it is like two into ten raised to the power six. So up to these elements, so I need. So it is like. So 2 into 10 raised to the power 6 log of log of 2 into 10 raised to the power 6. So it fits in the time complexity. Now comes the main thing. How we are going to do this uh, like a matrix type of stuff? So let us understand this one. Okay. So let me just uh, okay. So suppose this is the first row. Okay. So let me just change out the color. Okay, so suppose this is the first row, this is the second row, this is the third row, and this is the fourth row. And similarly, this is the first row, column, second column, third column, fourth column. Okay, so here it is the n, and here it is the m. Okay, now you can see the element at this position will be two. Okay, so this will be our matrix. Okay, so element at this position is two, and it is three, and it is four, and it is five. And here it again. It is three, four, five, six. And here it again. Four, five, six, seven. Note that I am doing i plus g for i th row and j th column. You can say it is uh, like four is the row number, and this is the column number four plus one five. And similarly six, seven, and eight. Now, okay. So what you need to find it out is like this matrix. And for every cell, you need to find out what is the number of prime divisors of this two, what is the number of prime divisors of this three, what is the number of prime divisors of this four. Like you need to find out for all the cell, and you need to do the sum operation for all the values that you are going to get, and finally print that value. This is your answer. Now, like uh, to iterate for every cell, and n and m is going around 10 raised to the power six. This is like a foolish step if you do build up the matrix and do that. Here you can get the partial mark, but I am not interested in that. So let's find out the efficient solution in a linear time. Okay, now what you guys are going to observe is like this pattern: this two, this three. Okay, so let me just write down clearly: this four and this five. I think you guys are observing it in a clearer way. This six, this seven, and this eight finally. 
like for every cell you are going to have this so let me just uh, wait a minute like if you look out for this six you can see these six are going to be present only over there if you look out for the five this five is present only over these positions like in a diagonal diagonal fashion like this four is only present over this position so if you are uh, just finding it out for the value four no need to iterate it for the all those cells which contain the value four you need to iterate it for the only one cell that is present over there and you need to count, count down what are the number of uh, cells which contain the value four and let's say number of cells which contain the value four is y and uh, let's say dp of four is the number of prime divisors of four then your answer is going to be incremented by number of cells into dp of four okay but uh, how to calculate this y in a linear time so you are going to iterate for uh, the very first row you can see two three four five and the ve very last column okay and if you iterate for the very first row and the very last column then you can say that you are going to cover every value you are going to cover two you are going to cover three you are going to cover four if you are at four you can easily find out what is the number of cells total number of cells which contain the value four you can see that it is the minimum of uh, i and g i think yes minimum of i and g uh, i don't know but yes uh, it is the, it is containing the value as 3 yes similarly the number of cells which contain the value 5 as this position okay so and similarly number of cells containing the value as 6 is only these position okay so finally you need to have the like you need to iterate for this first row and you need to iterate for the very last column okay and uh, for every uh, cell with some value you need to find out what is the number of cells that contain the value exactly equal to the current value let's say it is a y and you need to have the answer being incremented by y into dp of that value where dp is going to hold the number of prime divisors of a certain number so let's try to understand this one in more detail with the help of coding part okay so you can see all the test cases has been passed okay so what i have done is like take n and m and the last cell will hold the value n plus m this is the maximum we need to know the prime divisors up to this one so i will initialize every cell as zero okay and uh, like similar to this that of sieve algorithm i treat from two and it goes up to n and if that value is zero it is a prime number mark every multiples or uh, increment every multiples by one okay and uh, you need to include you the answers i treat for the very first row and uh, if uh, you are going to iterate for the very first row you need to find out what are the number of cells that will contain the value as the current cell value so i row number is i which is always remains one if you iterate for the very first row and the column number is j where we are iterating so our value is i plus j and number of cells where this current value is going to lie in this entire matrix will be a minimum of j comma n okay that is the column number and the value of n because we, we are going to iterate in a diagonal fashion if you look out the step like this is the diagonal fashion okay so that's why we are going to take minimum of j and n our answer is going to be incremented by the number of values into the number of prime divisors of the current element and similarly i am going to do this for the like uh, last column okay and increment your answer and finally print the answer so this will give you all test cases fast so if you have any doubts do let me know in the comment section of the video and uh, i will ask the viewers to like this video share this video and do subscribe to our youtube channel for latest updates thank you for watching this video Thank <laughs> you.